In this video, I am going to model the chromosomal structure. And when showing you the structure of a chromosome, we're going to go through the different parts of a chromosome to unpack um, the basics, but also to eliminate some common myths. If you would like to make your own model of chromosome, this is what you will need. But the instructions as to how to do so won't be provided until the end of the video. So the bulk of this video is focused on instruction related to the structure of a chromosome rather than the construction of the model itself. Probably most people, when they think of a chromosome, they think of this typical X shape, which is not wrong. That is a chromosome. And we're going to talk about the different parts of that first before I then explain why, you know, the X it's really only a sliver of time that the chromosome even looks like that, and that's right before the cell's dividing. Um, we'll look through how the chromosome actually looks if it's not going through division. Now, one thing I should point out is there's a loose form of DNA called chromatin that really is the structure of DNA when it's not dividing. But I guess we just want to separate how many chromosomes are here. In this technical picture, there's one but we'll explain some of the confusion points with that. In the middle of the chromosome is the centromere. The centromere is what keeps the two sides together, which we're going to name next. Um, we all know it's hard enough to keep it together, haha. Um, but yeah, that's what keeps it together if it's a chromosome, is the centromere. And the two sides that are held together by the centromere are each called a chromatid. Now, generally speaking, they are referred to as sister chromatids. However, what I want to take particular attention and draw your attention to is the different segments on the chromatids. Each of those segments, I put a letter. Each of those letters represents a gene. Well, I should say each location is a gene, um, meaning each of those little almost rectangle segments is a gene with a different allele in it. An allele is a form of the gene. So if you notice, some of them I've written capital letters, some of them I've written lowercase letters. That's to represent dominant and recessive alleles. The location where an allele is located is called its locus. So each of those almost rectangular segments on the chromosome has its own locus. But if you notice, if you look at the chromatid on the left and the chromatid on the right, the letters, and if they're uppercase or lowercase on the left, are identical to the right. And that's where I like to clean up a misconception here is although this X-shaped structure is a chromosome, this is a chromosome that is getting ready to divide uh, in half because it's really two chromosomes attached to each other um, that need to be separated out to go into two different cells as a cell is undergoing cell division. And the really interesting thing about it is when they are physically separated, they're no longer called sister chromatids, but now they're considered individual unique chromosomes. So when we think about um, cell division, such as mitosis, mitosis happens when a body's growing, when it's healing itself after an injury. Um, when you have 46 chromosomes that then need to be passed on to that new cell, to make cop when a cell is making copies of itself, basically what happens is an interphase of the cell cycle, there's a phase called S, or synthesis, DNA synthesis, where your genetic code is copied. So all 46 chromosomes have to make a copy. So that's why at the beginning of mitosis, all the chromosomes look like an X shape. That X shape is really, like we were saying, two chromosomes in one, even though they're called an individual chromosome when they're physically connected at their centromere, they're really copies of each other that are then going to be passed to each of the two new cells. So hopefully this clears up the misconception because I know a lot of people think of a chromosome as an X, which isn't a false thing, but the reality is the chromosomes in your cells look more like this, where they're long rod-shaped structures. If you want to make a big chromosome model or a small one, whatever size, I use a big sheet of construction paper. Then I folded it in half, and uh, when I drew it, the biggest thing to be careful of is you draw in a way that when you're going to cut it out at the fold, that you leave a little section in the middle where the centromere will be, so then when you cut it out, it's going to actually still be connected together. The nice part about and why I suggest folding at the middle 
And doing it that way is because then you're sure that both sides of the chromosome are the, literally the same exact size. Next, I simply took a ruler, um, so I put it across the whole chromosome, so then when I made lines for my gene loci, um, meaning the individual locus for each allele to be present, I wanted to make sure they looked equal on either side. So I just drew the lines across first, and then I picked the letters that I wanted and made sure that whatever letter I chose was the same on the other side, and if it was uppercase, that it remained uppercase, or lowercase, that it remained lowercase, to show that they truly are identical on both sides. And for me, since I'm a teacher and I want to be able to use this model over and over again, I laminated it, which of course is not a required step. Hope this helps. Construction paper, biology. Like, share, subscribe, oh, won't you please? Thanks!